In this section, we'll be working on company and user. Now, in our website, we will have multiple roles. That being said, there will be some user who have a company assigned to them. So, for that, we need to perform CRUD operations on company and we also want to display users. Since we have to display all of the users, we will have to add them in our repository pattern. So we'll be implementing all of that in this section from the next video. Now that our homepage is working and we see a list of products, we will start working on register and login. When you click on register, you see two options, email and password. What if I want more properties here? If you go to your database, and right here we have the ASP.NET users table which is the main table where you will have all of the properties that you want. In here, what if we want to add more properties like name, street address, city, state, postal code and so on. In order to do that, what we will do is we'll close the application here and we'll stop it. Let me close all of the documents. We will create a new model inside the application user. We will create a new model inside the bulky book dot models. We'll right click, add a new class file. We'll call this application user. Like always, it will be a public class. And then since we want to add properties to the ASP.NET users table, we have to inherit this from identity user. Now if you do control dot here, we see two packages. We will use the package microsoft.extensions.identity.store and we'll find and install the latest version. Once you do that, now if you add any new properties here and when you push migrations, it will add new columns. It will add new columns to your ASP.NET users table. Let me add few properties here. So right now we have added few properties here, name, street address, city, state, postal code and a role. Now the role will be what role the user belongs to. And remember here we are not adding this to the database. We have a not mapped here. This means this property will not be pushed to our database. That being said, let's add this to our database. So for that we will have to add that to application DB context and we'll do prop db set on application user and we'll call this application users it's time to add a migration we have the package manager console open here we will do add migration add user properties to db perfect let's update the database and once this is done, let's switch back to our SQL Server and let's do a select star here so that we can see all the columns. If you go on the right hand side, you can see all the new columns here. It has also added a discriminator here because when a new user will be added, you can either add a new application user that you just created or you can add an identity user. Based on what you add, that discriminator will be updated automatically and I will also show that in the upcoming videos. But you can see how we can add new properties to the existing ASP.NET users table. Now what we want is for each user, we want to assign them a company if they are a company user. So for that we need somewhere to manage all of the company and also create a new company. All of that can only be done by admin users or employees of the company. But we need a way to perform CRUD operations on company. So for that we'll also need a new model. Let's add that in the next video. We have to do multiple things here. The first thing we have to do is we need to add a model for our company. So right here we'll right click, 
add a new class file we'll call this company make sure you have the public keyword here and then we can paste all the properties that we want we'll do control dot to add the fields for required and id will automatically be the primary key with identity we'll make sure the u is lowercase here perfect so this looks good for what we want to do then we have to push this to database so for that we have application db context and we'll change this to company and we have companies once you do that we need to add a migration so add migration add company to db and we'll update the database then the next task that i have is if we go to our application user we want a foreign key reference to the company so we have done foreign key references before all we have to do here is prop int we have a company id and then we need a foreign key here we'll do a control dot it's already there we'll copy this company id and paste it here and what will be the class here it will be prop company let's call this company it is simple as that but we had a special requirement here not all of our users will belong to company some users will be individual users as well so for that company id can be empty here or a null value in order to let that be true we just need to add a question mark here to make this field a nullable field once you add a question mark null value is an acceptable value for company id so if there is an individual user who registers their company id will be null if it's a user who belongs to company they will have a company id assigned that being said we need to add another migration here we'll call this add company id to user and you can take a look at the migration here it is adding a column company id in asp.net users adding a foreign key reference and everything looks good also if you notice here the nullable is true that's all we wanted we'll update the database great so with this all of the database tasks have been done for company and application user now that we have the company model let's start with the javascript first so we'll go to the bulky book let's copy category and paste it one more time this will be for company.js inside company.js we need to change the controller name we have not added that yet but we will add it with the name company so we can just change it here and what are all the properties that we want to display first we'll display the name of the customer and we'll give it a width of 15 percent let me paste it few times here next what we want is street address city state and phone number so we'll just go back and here we'll do street address make sure the second word first letter should be capital because it is camel casing we have city state and we have the phone number along with that a new property or a new type that we want to display is a checkbox here so the data here i can just copy the name to avoid spelling mistake is authorized company first should be lowercase then next what we want here is render what we want to render is a checkbox so it will be a function which will contain data and in here we can check if data and we will check if the data is true that means if the company is authorized then what we want to return here is we'll use the tilde sign again we have input type is equal to checkbox make sure there is no spelling mistake here we will have the disabled and we will make it checked this looks good for our checkbox if this is checked we'll copy this in the else part 
we will remove the check property we'll just add a comma here for the width and let's give it a width of 10 percent that looks good after that we have the data where we'll get the id and we'll perform the upsert or we'll delete the company this let me add a width of 25 percent i think the percentage might not add up so i'll make it 10 and 10 as well this looks good for our company js and everything is aligned here let me save this and then the next thing we want is the company controller so inside admin copy and paste category controller rename this to company in here we'll do Control shift f we will look for the word category change it with company in the current document match case replace all and we'll make it a lower case now again replace all awesome let's make sure everything is aligned unit of work index it should be empty we haven't added to unit of work but we will this looks good and let me just scroll down api calls yep everything looks good all we have to do is add this to unit of work next so let's do that as well right here we'll go to our unit of work repository let me copy category and copy the category repository as well change this to company repository copy the name here company repository i company repository company company repository update will be on company company companies here now rather than updating individual properties with entity framework you also have underscore db dot update and you just need to pass the object it does all the mappings and everything automatically we won't be saving the changes this looks good we need to create the iCompany repository we'll copy the iCompany paste it here on company and we'll hit the update for company perfect so with this both of our repositories should be good and last thing we need is unit of work let's open that up as well i category let me copy this we'll make the change for company Perfect. this looks good a unit of work awesome so with this if you go back to your company controller all the errors should now be resolved great last thing that is remaining is we need to make the views